All right, guys and gals, in this video, we're going to look at an example of how to use the crisscross rule to write formulas for ionic compounds. And I want you to use this example to help you continue throughout the rest of the flashback. So in order to use the crisscross rule, we're going to say, okay, aluminum is going to bond with sulfur. But how? Well, in order to answer that question and to write the proper formula for this, we need to know what the charges of each of these elements would be if they became ions. Because if we're looking at ionic bonding, we're talking about two ions bonding together, not two neutral elements. So let's turn these guys into ions first. Well, in order to do that, we have to know how many valence electrons they currently have in their neutral state. Aluminum is in the 13th family, and so that means that aluminum has three valence electrons. Sulfur, on the other hand, is in the 16th family, and so that means that it has six valence electrons. Now here's the problem. Neither of them have met the octet rule. Remember that the octet rule says in order to be stable, they need eight valence electrons. Both of them have two options in order to get here. Aluminum can get rid of those three valence electrons and go to the shell below it, which is already stable, or aluminum can try to steal five more valence electrons and get to that eight, to that octet rule. Sulfur, on the other hand, it could also try to get rid of those six and go down to the next one, or it can try to steal two and get to that valence electron. So those are always our two options. Anytime we're trying to figure out what the charge of an ion will be, they can either get rid of their valence electrons or they can steal another element's valence electrons and get to that eight for the octet rule. What they're going to do comes down to energy efficiency, or I like to call it laziness. I like to say that the elements just as lazy as we are. They want to be at home in bed too. So what's going to be the easiest for them energy-wise? Well, that's always going to be whatever it has the smaller number. So with aluminum, it can either get rid of three or try to steal five. Well, obviously three is the smaller number, so aluminum is going to get rid of three valence electrons. And I erased that minus three at the top because that's actually the opposite of what's gonna happen. If you are losing negative charges, you're going to become three positive. The three comes from the fact that that's how many valence electrons we lost. The positive comes from the fact that we lost negative charges, so we have more protons. So aluminum's charge is three positive. For sulfur, though, it can either lose six or gain two. Two is the smaller number, so sulfur is just going to steal two valence electrons from someone else because it's stealing negative charges from people. That's two extra negative charges that you didn't have before, but now you have. So once we figured out what their charges are, we can figure out how they're going to bond using the crisscross rule. All that the crisscross rule says is you have aluminum with a three positive here and a sulfur with a two negative there. You're going to take this three and you're going to make it a subscript of sulfur of the opposite element. So the charge becomes the subscript of the opposite element. And in the end, we're left with Al2S3. Al2S3. Three, because all we did was crisscross. Let me know if you have any questions, and you can use this for the rest of the questions on your flashback.